Good morning. So since uh, we have eight extra minutes, some of them I will leave to Emmanuel, but some of them I will tell you some uh, stories. So the first story is that uh, several years ago, we had to decide about where the Technion goes. In other words, in terms of research, we had to decide uh, which route we are taking, the half of the Technion that is in the exact sciences and engineering. So our vice president for research at that time, Odette Shmueli, held a meeting because he's from computer science, somehow he's in love with, computer, with quantum computing. So he held a meeting and he asked the people, the Technion that do quantum computing or some aspects of quantum stuff to give a review of what's going on around the world in uh, quantum computing and where does the state of Israel stand and where the Technion stand. So people gave overviews, Yossi Avron gave an overview on the, what is known about theory and who are the Israeli leaders in this area. And uh, I think Dudi Gershoni gave something about quantum sources. And there are quite a few of us. And after about uh, an hour, I think, at some point, I predated uh, Miri Regev and I, kept, cut the, I said, cut the bullshit. In other words, if I have to pinpoint to it, uh, as it is today, uh, that we do not have world leadership in quantum computing per se. The Technion, I would say the state of Israel. There is one that is at the World League, and she is Dorita Arono from Jerusalem that is really at the, I would say, the cutting edge of the few theories that can do that. And all the others are non-existent, but we have huge leadership in quantum science and engineering. Many of us are doing that. So we start a discussion and after, uh, I would say, another hour, everybody was convinced that this is the route that we should take, and this is where we are going, and it's also a natural continuation of the effort that we already have in nanosciences, because as the things become smaller and smaller in the nanoscale, the laws of nature, generally speaking, start to become quantum, whether you want it or not. And that's where we started to lay the foundation to this, and uh, after some time, we chose uh, a, a boss, a leader, Gadi, to lead this effort, and started to propagate it. And this is how this idea came about, about a year and a half ago, I would say, uh, in terms of start to think and making a plan. And hopefully within a year from now, we will have some solid uh, sum of money to start the effort. And now I want to take that twist and refer it to what uh, my younger brother, Emmanuel, does. So back in 1982, uh, Richard Feynman, made another prediction. So Peretz talked about the prediction, the prediction that uh, Richard Feynman made in 1959, where he gave the first talk about uh, nano. This was, by the way, that 1959 historic talk was at Caltech. And they, this was the annual meeting of the American Physical Society. Caltech is a very small university. So just imagine that you can build, you can bring all the people of them that were, came to that conference, the APS March meeting, into one lecture hall of, at Caltech. Huh? And there he gave this uh, speech about there's uh, a lot of uh, space down there at the bottom. And he made two challenges. One of them is to make a micro motor that is 400 microns on each side. And the other one was to take the entire Encyclopedia Britannica to put it on a hairpin. So uh, within two years, the first one, and for every challenge he offered $1,000 as an award from his own pocket. So within a year, uh, a, I would say an engineer, a, a talented engineer from Los Angeles, from Pasadena, was able to make the first one, the motor of 400 microns aside, but with existing technology. So there was no technological advancement. For that, he got the $1,000, but there was no breakthrough. And 23 years later, 1982, a PhD student at Stanford made the first, uh, I would say, reduced printing or nano printing of, uh, on a hairpin. Uh, what he did, he didn't like apparently the Encyclopedia Britannica, so instead he did Charles Dickens, The Tales of Two Cities, and he put it on a hairpin. And if I do fast forward a bit, 20 years later, uh, Uri Sivan and his group made the Nano Bible right here in Israel at the Technion. And if you go to the um, uh, Israel Museum, you can see the Nano Bible, the entire Bible on a hairpin. And it was given by former President Shimon Peres as a gift to, as a gift to the Pope when he visited. So you can see that now, those that invented the Bible in the first place know how to reduce the size and to make it small. So, okay. Being an atheist like me, we understand the business. <laughs> Their priority, uh, proprietary information. 
At any rate, uh, in 1982, Feynman made, an, made another speech. And the speech was actually another deep speech with a lot of insight. So he talked about problems that cannot be solved with ordinary computers. So it turns out that there, are, there is a class of problems. At that time, he could think about a few. But today, there are, we know that there are very many of those that we can write down the equations of motion. We can write down, we know everything there is to know on how the system behaves. But we can't solve them. There are many examples. Uh, so I don't know which, about which one Emmanuel will talk about, but I saw in his lab at least three of these. But I can give you some examples if you wish. You know, we know how to describe Bose-Einstein condensate when everything, all the atoms are in the condensate state. And we know from experiments that they evaporate. We don't know how they evaporate. We understand that they evaporate in pairs. They go from the BC state to thermal state in pairs. And we know how to write down the equations, but we can't solve them. The, I think the largest number of uh, quantum many body interaction that was ever solved, uh, half numeric, half analytic, was by Lenz Sederbaum uh, in Germany. Lenz is also Israeli, uh, originally. And uh, I think it was on the order of 20. Ophir Alon, who is now faculty member of the Haifa University, is the guy that did that. So it's small numbers. There is no BEC of 20 atoms. You need at least several thousands. We can't solve them. We see an experiment. We know it's fragments. We, can, we don't know how. All the theories are superficial. That's just one example. There are many others. What happens to quantum magnetism and what happens to the dynamics of, in, in these uh, scales when you need to look at interactions of several thousand of atoms. So what Feynman said at that time is that since we can't solve it, not analytically, not numerically, what we can do is one day to take a quantum system, prepare it at such that we set the ground rules, the equation of motion, that it will uh, satisfy the model. We follow the equation of motion of the model that we wish to solve, set the initial conditions, and let it run. <coughs> and do one experiment, do another experiment, do another experiment, do eventually do ensemble average, expectation value. And the result will be a special purpose analog computer, analog quantum computer, that will give us the answer. <coughs> this was a dream, 1982. So it took. 20 some years. I would say uh, in 2001, 2002, Emmanuel did the first attempt along these lines. That model was still one can solve. But later on, it evolved to some things that cannot be solved in a computer. When, so the first one that he did that, and he was the first one really to do this kind of quantum simulators, was the Mott insulator transition. I'm not sure that Emmanuel will talk about it today, but maybe on Sunday when he has to give a thank you talk for the Harvey Prize. And in the past few years, the ground has been broken, and now we have true quantum simulators. It's still just the beginning. But 10 years from now, there will be 100 groups doing that on various models. So with this, I will invite Emmanuel to give the, the scientific talk of the Harvey Prize. Uh, I think I would bet that Emmanuel is probably also the youngest to ever win the Harvey Prize. And we, as we foresee the future, we hope that one day he will remember and invite us to Stockholm. <laughs>